Welcome to the UNESCO World Poetry Day celebration, which was supposed, in fact, to be celebrated on March 21st, 2020. This was for the International Year of Plant Health. And this is organized by my UNESCO Chair on Community Sustainability from Local to Global. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of Anishinaabe and Odinosuni peoples covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and within the land protected by the Dish and one, with One Spoon, One Tom Agreement. Thank you for all of you who were here before us. The reason for the celebration is that when we look at UNESCO, we are not talking only about education and sciences, but we are talking about culture. And when we think about the role of UNESCO in terms of making peace and continuing development in a sustainable, peaceful and justice way, it is clear that that means that all cultures have to be included. And that means that culture leads to arts, leads to the way traditionally we can communicate in different ways through performances that are celebrating different parts of our life and culture. For UNESCO, the reason of the World Poetry Day is because poetry is a mainstay of oral tradition and over centuries can communicate the innermost values of diverse culture. It is to encourage a return to oral tradition of poetry recitals, to promote the teaching of poetry, to restore dialogue, dialogue between poetry and the other arts. And UNESCO believe that it's important when we think about building peace. 2020 was the International Year of Plant Health. And the, as declared by the United Nations in January 2019, by stating that healthy plants constitute the foundation for all life on earth, as well as ecosystem functions and food security and are key for sustaining life on earth. The reason for putting this international year is because we need to protect plants. We need to protect life. Plants are the source of oxygen we breathe, the food we eat, in fact, all life on earth. We need to protect plants to help end hunger, reduce poverty, protect the environment, and boost economic development. And this is very important, especially when we think about the sustainable development goals. Although with the pandemic, we have discovered that we probably will not make as much progress as possible. One thing we realize is that we need plants. We need them for our food security. We need them to be able to breathe better. And it's certainly important, not only for us, but for all, all the other culture and countries in the world. Now, it's time to celebrate the winners of the International Year of Plant Health 2020. Now, our first winner, notre premier, le premier gagnant, est euh, un, en français, Un monde tout vert, par Alexander Emmett Yap. C'est dans la catégorie étudiant universitaire. Je vous le présente. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Alexander Yap et je suis un étudiant à Brock. J'étudie l'éducation avec un majeur en mathématiques et un mineur en français. Je suis aussi un tuteur à Brock. La raison pour laquelle je voulais écrire ce poème, c'est parce que je trouve que ces jours-ci, beaucoup de gens ne payent pas attention, ou ne payent pas assez d'attention, plutôt, à la nature et à notre planète. Je voulais faire un poème qui adressait des choses que je trouve sont très importantes dans notre monde. Maintenant pour le poème. Un monde tout vert. En fermant les yeux, je vois un monde tout vert. Les arbres étirant leurs branches vers le ciel. Me donnant couvert de la pluie du printemps et me protégeant des rayons forts de l'été. Je clins les yeux, les cou couleurs commencent à changer. Les feuilles qui tombent me laissent enchantée. L'hiver arrive et je vois la neige, laissant les squelettes de bois tout glacés. Je ne me souviens pas quand tout a changé, les bourgeons si jeunes qui ne fleurissent plus, l'ombre des arbres qui ne confortent guère, l'art qui me coûte de plus en plus cher. Dis-moi, mon petit, 
si doux comme le miel, ne verras-tu jamais une belle petite abeille? N'entendras-tu jamais le chant des oiseaux? Sauras-tu même la joie de planter une fleur? En ouvrant les yeux, je me sens soulagé. Il nous reste encore du temps, mes frères et mes sœurs. Il ne prend qu'un effort de toi et de moi. Un monde tout ouvert, c'est ce que j'abois. Merci pour avoir écouté à mon poème et merci pour m'avoir laissé partager avec vous. J'espère que je vous ai inspiré. Merci, Alexander. Now I would like to present from the secondary school students category, Tara from Elizabeth Grace to my note. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Teneno. Um, I'm a student at Blessed Trinity Catholic Secondary School and I'm in my fourth year there. Um, and I've written a poem for the Brock Sustainability Poetry Contest. So my poem is called Terra and it's a reflection on the negative impacts of climate change um, and the effect uh, that humans have had on the world. Um, but it's also a reflection on the beautiful things that are unique to Mother Earth. And it also discusses how humans have failed to realize um, their duty to uh, help fix the Earth and that it's our mission now that we've done our damage, but we now have to clean up what we've done. So, um, here's my poem, Tara. And she wept with monsoons, heaving sobs crashing into tropical shores. And she retaliated with inferno, erupting flames blistering through the Pacific core. And she shook with terracotta quakes, glacial fractures sending fatal tremors from coast to coast. But she smiled with honeysuckle fields, growing sweetly like daisies from pillar to post. And she laughed with the rolling tides, sweeping in and out with each intake of breath. But when she fell sick, we blamed the ebb and flow for her untimely death. And when her fever ran the world in circles, we begged for the answers we refused to accept. So when the night sky remained perpetually black, we scorned Mother Earth, the cruel insomniac. Congratulations, Elizabeth. And now I will present to you Jana. Vasu in the category of English University Students, the Active Agent. Hi, my name is Diana Vasu. I am an English major at Brock University. Um, just finished my fourth year and I'm going to be back for my master's next year. Um, I'm also an artist, activist, um, uh, paint houses occasionally. Um, as for my poem, uh, to match the theme of sustainability, um, immediately I thought of um, GMO crops versus non-GMO crops, um, because when I think of sustainability, I think of things that can regenerate, and um, as you might know, GMO crops include, um, like, they, they don't have seeds that can reproduce in the, in the following year, so that any farmer who um, chooses to grow GMO crops has to go through Monsanto and buy the seeds every year from them to continue to grow their crops. Um, whereas, you know, non-GMO crops obviously uh, have their own seeds and so farmers can reuse those seeds and grow them again in the following year. And so um, I kind of played off that theme in writing my poem. And um, I framed this as kind of like a war. Uh, so the speaker is walking between two fields of crops and the one side is corn crops that are non-GMO and the other side is crops that are GMO and um, you know, the speaker is kind of uh, reflecting on um, like the differences between those two crops and um, there's a lot of like war wartime imagery and um, uh, things like that um, so I'll read the poem now I guess <sighs> the active agent in photosynthesis is resilience Earth native corn crops stoke border disputes with airborne seedlings, floating into enemy territory, making it home, roots intertwining, tender solidarity. Generals dressed in hazmat suits armed with chemical weapons annihilate the intruders. Underground, the living still clutch the hands of the deceased. 
their mutated counterparts know their time is limited, and that the hands of man have toyed with their genetic code, ensuring the mortality of their kind. April's cruelty knows no bounds. Dirt fields beg to be reunited with their beloved crops. The Occident, borrowed from past harvests, the Orient, lab-grown, planted by frantic hands, the scent of Armageddon pe peppering the air, all-consuming. When the constant whir of industry ceases, the earth-native corn stalks will mourn the barren field beside them, mutated themselves, but begat by the resurgent. I will walk the line between the perfected by nature and the tainted by man, looking for life through the shuffling leaves and forgotten plastic shells. Thanks. Thank you, Diana. Now, under the category of general public in English, we have Franco Cortese with Adam and Eve, I recall, the tree. Franco Cortese, poet, recreant, arid knave, limbic ape, and mechanical salt butter rogue, to quote the late John Falstaff. I'd like to thank the judges of the 2020 UNESCO and Brock University Sustainability Poetry Contest, Gregory Betts, Adam Dickinson, Anita Gordon, and Catherine Perreault, for choosing my poem, Adam and Eve Recall the Tree, as one of this year's winners. Uh, I'd like to also thank the uh, Rock uh, UNESCO chair and host of the contest, uh, Liette Messer, as well. Uh, the poem limits itself to the use of words and phrases present in a scientific research article, which I co-authored and published in the journal Scientific Reports in 2019. Science is a polynomial and pluripotent thing. On the one hand, the primordial source of modern progress and the mostly upward trajectory of improvements in quality of life and our capacity for self-determination. On the other hand, I think with a long history of use for just the opposite, for discrimination, segregation, and as an excuse for the placing of severe and grotesque ontological constraints upon the capacity for self-determination among various demographics. And of course, uh, the primary source of our most pressing modern existential threats, both to ourselves and our earthly compatriots. Uh, the art of the scientific paper is also a funny thing. Uh, it is a thing uh, written in an explicitly, intentionally, almost comically objective fashion, and presented in a way that uh, obfuscates the subjective biases of its authors and the not absolutely but frequently highly subjective motivations of their institutions. In choosing the scientific paper uh, as a natural resource to be mined and excavated for the poem's permissible words and phrases, its uh, allowed units of being, if you will, the poem attempts in some respects to subvert that objective form uh, by using the scientific paper as the procedural source uh, to derive a narrative that uh, attempts to speak to themes of uh, subjective, cultural, and existential import. And indeed, uh, in the composition of what is in uh, large respect an eco-poem, uh, derived from a document whose publisher uh, has gone so far as to claim ownership over the uh, highly lucrative domain nature.com. Uh, additionally, the poem uh, attempts uh, not so much to conflate as to interpolate our current ecological crisis with uh, other historical and modern forms of omission, uh, constraint, and erasure, interrogating the inherently insidious nature uh, of lists and overriding echoes in the fallways of the burning house of history to compose an elegaic index of catastrophe for the present tense passing of uh, passive pastoral voices caught in the vice grip of the late plasticine. I threat to make the front matter any fatter, so without further ado, adieu, adieu, exant the poem. Adam and Eve recall the tree. The smoking fold split in corpuscular scores. The mortal clocks, the wrapper, the fraction. The red origin and the loss, the died-off smoking forest, the dropout, the deep accelerated loss of nonlinear recall, 
the cross entropy made good by cross validation. The feed forward back propagation of split ethnic ethics and adaptive binary arbitrage. With the risk without repair, the urban smoke and red rural rest, the residence and red record, the racial status, the age, the sex, assessed, the deep dividing defined, the random consistence, the correctly predicted, the protocol, the years, the fall, the descending tail, the model subject, the means and median end, and the absolute error of the public good, the rapid accumulation of material self averaged across fully anonymized groups of public subjects according to the public truth, ranked by the intrinsically stochastic and deleterious increase in aggregation of deposited reconstructed spaces, the right to explore without learning, the geographical layers scored red with smoking blood, true blood, good blood, blood in artificial clocks, anonymized trees, anonymized loss, self-reported rights and permissions, environmental fasting and premature worldwide death twice as old as its chronological age, shallow blood by based biological arbitrage, nature selected and regressed, <clears throat> scored, plateaued, disappeared, split origins pre-processed and normalized, public repositories built on public methylation and trained on false positive predictions to feed forward a reconstruction of the missing values we used to aggregate self, the shallow machine, <clears throat> method, material, the loss of actual origins for accelerated clocks. Mortal architectures overfitting cost functions for optimized public performance. Glucose, cholesterol, and other models of artificial good. High density lipoprotein made good by high density urban grids. True human ethics on deep smoking tracks. Red cost, red loss, red end. Congratulations, Franco. Now it's my pleasure to present two of our judges and wonderful poets that will give you some of their selected poems. This is Catherine Papert and Adam Dickinson from Brock University. My name is Adam Dickinson. I'm a poet and professor in the English department at Brock University and I was one of the judges for this year's Sustainable Poetry Contest. The theme this year was plants. My poem, which I'll share with you, is a response to plants. It is a response, I suppose, that comes from a slightly different perspective. I suffer from seasonal allergies, as many people do, and so I wrote about the pollen from one of the trees that uh, I'm allergic to, birch trees. In order to write my poem, I took Robert Frost's famous poem, Birches, and I ran it through a translation program into several different languages, all of them associated with countries in the Northern Hemisphere where birches are quite common. So English, French, uh, Irish, Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, Russian, Mongolian, Chinese, and Japanese, to name just a few. And then with the resulting text, I produced a new poem, peeling it back, so to speak, peeling the bark back to produce the poem. So I'll share it with you now. This poem is called Oral Allergy Syndrome. Grow and get lost, these stacked bottles think inside the sky, mocking spells like a forest without a road turned automatically to the pure white birch wing. Les palmiers meurent sur la côte on injecte du benzoate à la base des palmiers chez eux mourant. Ils sèchent, piqués par les papillons et les charançons. Sans palmiers, un jardin a trois côtés. Du laurier rose, la vénéneuse orangerie qui poudre la lisière des rues quadrillées par le soleil. Un eucalyptus, l'arbre pensif gorgé d'eau et qui regorge de couleurs persistantes de tendresse. 
un faux poivrier pour ses pépites rosées et sa nostalgie éblouie des sols pleureurs. Des figues, le sept de chaque mois, cet éclatement, cet éclaboussement de rire, soliès tout proche et leur village. Des galets, un peu de coussou au rêve de pistache, un souvenir de garrigue, quelques pierres pour marquer le pas. Des bougainvillées, plus belle que la magie des pervenches, frondaisons fleuries de l'immobilité, singulière tiédeur des mots de l'été, de la glycine pour le sud des soirées mauves et tristes, le monde se remplit de wisteria et se dissipe, avec un peu de courage, un mûrier, un seul, blanc ou noir, et toujours noir, qui explose sur les trottoirs tigrés. Grow and get lost, these stacked bottles think inside the sky, mocking spells like a forest with a road turned automatically to the pure white birch wing. Thank you again, Adam and Catherine. And in fact, thank you to all our judges, Gregory, Adam, Neta, and Catherine. I greatly appreciate your help and support in preparing this uh, event. And uh, without having you, it will be probably very, very difficult. So I greatly appreciate what you have been doing. Now, stay tuned for 2021. Uh, we are still going ahead uh, with the International Year of Peace and Trust and the International Year of Fruits and Vegetables as the, con the contest on uh, sustainability poetry will continue. And we hope, unfortunately, that uh, it would be alive, alive but uh, we may try to do it virtually uh, on the same day this time. Thank you. Merci, chez Miigwech, and congratulations again to all our winners.